What's distinctive about spinel is it's highly colored and it's isotropic. So when I cross the polars, you'll see that it is black and just stays black. It has high relief um, and it occurs in certain special rock types. This one happens to be a calc silicate. It also occurs in ultramafic rocks and uh, peridotites. Here's more of that green spinel from the calc silicate. The material around it is actually clintonite, which is an unusual calcium mica. But this is a nice example of a whole bunch of different crystals across the polars. They're all black, and they just stay black. This shows a cluster of spinel crystals, paler green than the ones that we saw before, but again, when I cross the polars, you'll see they just are black. Now, this is a spinel peridotite. So those brown grains are spinel. You will be able to see that when I cross the polars, all of the other minerals in there are birefringent, but those brown grains are now black and they stay black. And finally, one really big spinel crystal in the spinel peridotite. Remember that peridotites typically have only one aluminous mineral. At shallow depths, it would be plagioclase, although plagioclase peridotites are rare. Spinel peridotites form at intermediate depths. They're pretty common. And garnet peridotites form at greater depth. Garnet is also isotropic and also high relief, but it would be colorless in a rock like this.